Bonjour. Welcome to Wasa Distance Education Center's radio Zoom classes. This is MEL3E, grade 11 workplace math, and I am the teacher, Bronwyn Slate. If you'd like to participate live today, you can call the Wasa Studio at 1 800 465 7144 or 737 4017. You can listen on the radio at 91.9 FM and also on the television at Bell Express U channel 972. You're always welcome to join me live through the Zoom link, which is available both for me, your teacher, and also your DEC. Our classes are scheduled Monday through Thursday from 9 until 10 in the morning, and we are in our eighth week of our nine-week course. At this point, you definitely should be submitting work for marking. So a reminder that the support questions, the ones with little pencil icons, are not for marking. These are practice problems. You can decide which ones and how many to do. If you're understanding a concept, it's totally okay for you to skip questions. You don't have to do them all just because they're there. But if you need more practice, also please ask, and I'm happy to give you more practice. The key questions, however, the ones with little key icons are the ones to submit for marking, and these ones you need to do all of the questions. I'm marking them all, so please do them all. Show all of your work, your steps, your thinking. This way I can understand what it is that you understand. And if you're struggling with something, it gives me more information so I can help you. So how do you submit your work for marking? Well, there's three methods. The first is to scan your work and send it electronically. If you have a device, you can scan using that device. Apple devices have the Notes app and Android devices have the Google Drive app. <clears throat> These are fairly straightforward point and click scan functions, but on my YouTube channel, there are tech tutorials that will walk you through step-by-step step how to scan if you need that help. Or you can also ask me and I'm happy to help you figure it out. Then you can send it to me through either email at studentwork at nnec.on.ca and cc it to bronwyn.slate at nnec.on.ca. Or you can also send it to me through Facebook Messenger where my name is bslate wasa. The second method is to drop your work off in Sioux Lookout. We have an outdoor mailbox at 74 Front Street with a bright red building next to the post office and have a small white mailbox next to our side entrance. You can just stick it in there anytime and I'll get it back to you as soon as I can. The third method is to hand your work into your DEC. Your DEC can then send your work through the express <clears throat> or fax it to 807-737-1732 or toll free fax to 1-800-463-7852. Sorry, if you'd like to connect with me through social media, both my Facebook and my YouTube channel are under the name B Slate Wasa. All of our radio Zoom classes are recorded and I upload them to YouTube shortly after broadcasting and then share them on Facebook. So you can find them there and it's fairly straightforward. I put them in a playlist called MEL3E. So everything is there, pretty easy to find. Also on YouTube, I have uploaded short videos that explain common errors and confusing concepts. So if you're struggling with something, there might be a video there that addresses that and walks you through that topic specifically. So it's a good place to go and check out before just doing a general internet search to look for help. Math is a really visual subject, so I strongly encourage you to access the videos. Just listening to me talk is only gonna give you a small portion of understanding. Seeing the whole thing is really gonna set you up for the most success. So either joining me live through Zoom, you don't have to talk to me, just watching is fine. Or watching the YouTube videos on your own time, also a great option. If either of those work for you, let me know and I'm happy to send you a copy of the recordings so that you still get the full experience and can really set yourself up for success. So if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out and contact me. My email address is bronwyn.slate at nnac.on.ca. Connect with me again through Facebook where my name is B. Slate Wasa. Call me at the office at 807-737-1488, extension 2209, or toll-free 1-800-667-3703. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., though I teach from 9 until 11. So that is not a good time to try to get a hold of me. Today's lesson is lesson 18, and we are looking at planning a trip. 
this is an important lesson because it is connected to your culminating. Though your culminating activity does cover your whole, the whole course. So it's not just this, but part of your culminating is that you are planning a trip. So this is important to know how to do. So our learning goals are that at the end of this lesson, you will be able to plan a road trip and you'll understand the various costs associated with a road trip. And you know you've met the learning goals because you can plan a trip using Google Maps and you can determine distances involved in travel and you can calculate the cost of accommodation, fuel, food, and entertainment while vacationing. When we'll use this in real life? Well, we're developing the skills to attack problems. So not only are we learning how to plan a trip, but just generally thinking about the various components when we are dealing with a new situation or a problem that we're gonna to need to consider how we have to look at multiple things, not just one thing. But first let's activate our brain with some mental math. I don't believe in mad math minutes. They cause stress and anxiety in students more often than not. So we don't do them. Instead, we work on developing skills that build our comfort and confidence with numbers and really just work on the tools that we each individually have. So our question today is 14 times 52. And we're using the strategy of making a landmark. What that is, is that we're gonna multiply our number by a close friendly number. So what, when I say 14, 52, I say, well, 14 times 52 isn't particularly friendly, but 14 times 50 isn't too bad because 14 times 50 is, well, 10 times 50 is 500 and four times 50 is 200. So 14 times 50 is going to be 700. And then I still need another two groups. So I could do 14 times two, which is 28. So in total, 14 times 52 is 728. So just sometimes multiplying by closest friendly number can really make it straightforward to you to figure out the whole part. And that's all what Making a Landmark is today. All right, prior learning, what do we need to know going into today's lesson? I wanted to talk a little bit about time zones because in Canada, we have a lot of time zones and that can affect our travel. So we have two sets of time zones right now in Canada because we still have summertime and wintertime. Daily savings is still something that exists in our, in our society. Something that might be changing, but it still continues to exist. So it's something to be aware of. <clears throat> Here in Sioux Lookout and most of our region, we are in central time zone. Some places, like I know Mish is in Eastern uh, Daylight Time or Eastern Time Zone. And I'm not sure if I think maybe um, Port Severn might be too. So different places are. So that can, it's a little bit different. You have to know your own area. So if you're traveling east, then we go through Eastern time zone, Atlantic time zone, and then Newfoundland has its own time zone, which is half an hour difference than the Atlantic time zone. Uh, if you're traveling west, then we have mountain time zone and then Pacific time zone. Saskatchewan doesn't change times. So during the summer, they are part of mountain time zone. During the winter, they are part of central time zone because they don't change. They just stay the same. So just something to be aware of. It can be a little bit tricky. Mostly what this, how this affects isn't so much for driving because it's fairly easy to just sort of change your clock as you're going. If you have a cell phone, your cell phone most likely will automatically change. 
you might have to change your car clock most likely. But uh, if you're flying, then that can be confusing because if you jump from one time zone to another time zone or you skip over a time zone, then sometimes that can be confusing. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. All right, so what new concepts are we looking at today? So we are planning a trip. Things that we need to consider when we're planning a trip. So we need to travel the distance that we're talking about. Remember, we're talking about planning a road trip. So we will look at traveling by airplane and bus a little like during the other sessions this week. But today's we're looking at planning our road trip. So when you're driving, how far can you travel in a day? And that's going to be dependent upon various situations, like your own personal situation. If you have kids, if you have pets, if you have uh, different mobility needs, different things for your own body, it's going to matter different things for how far you can travel in a day. Uh, so do you have kids and pets to consider? Is the goal to get to the final destination or to enjoy the journey? So are you just trying to power through and get to the end? Or are you going on a road trip to enjoy the experience of the road trip? Then you need to look at fuel costs, accommodations, both on the road and at your final destination. You need to think about food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, whatever makes sense for your household. You need to think about taxes and how taxes are different in different provinces. Then you also need to think about entertainment. You want to plan for it because you're probably going to be spending money when you go places. There are going to be things to check out. So admission costs, you want to pay. You want to just budget for it. And also souvenirs. You're probably going to want to buy some stuff. So you want to plan for it when you're budgeting. So you don't, you know, you might not do exactly stay within your budget, but having a general plan is really going to set you up for more success opposed to just winging it. So for lesson 18, there are no support questions. Lesson 18 just walks you through how to do your key questions in terms of how to plan a trip. So you just follow along the instructions and you're handing in your whole, the whole lesson 18. You're not, uh, none of them are support questions. So none of them are you're, you're keeping for yourself. If you don't have access to the internet, and therefore don't have access to Google um, Maps, let me know so that we can figure out a plan for you. Okay, so we're going to today in our lesson, we're going to take a trip. We're not taking the trip that is in your, uh, in your booklet, because you're going to do that one on your own. But we're going to take a trip to follow along on how we would plan this trip. So. We're going to take a trip from Sulcout to Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. So this is the route that we're going to take. Um, you can see it's about 34 hours driving time, which is 3,196 kilometers. Google Maps shows you where there's construction. This is a screenshot I took a while ago. So this construction probably has changed. If you were to go in and check it out directly, um, today, but it does, Google Maps does give you some information that is relatively current. So we're going to pretend that we are a family of four, two adults, two kids, one who's 10, one who's 15 are going on this trip. When you are doing your own trip, both for your accommodating, well, for your accommodating, you'll figure out who's going on your trip, it'll explain. But for this lesson 18, you go with your family. So I will adjust depending on if you're a family of seven, if you're a family of two, if you're a family of one, then you decide who's going on your trip and go that way. So there's not a right answer. There's not a certain number of people that I expect you to go on. I want you to plan a trip for people for who's going to go on a trip with you. If you want to go on a trip and take a friend and you're going to pay for the friend, great that's totally fine. You just decide who you want to take on your trip. 
We're going to be driving there to Charlottetown over five days. We're going to stay in Charlottetown for four days. And then we're going to be driving back over two days. Or sorry, three days. We're coming back faster. All right. So to drive to Charlottetown, we're going to fill out this chart. And you have a very similar chart in your booklet um, that you're going to fill out for your travels. So we're starting in Sulagout. And if you want to start in your own community and either drive on the ice road or um, including your flight to Sioux Lookout, you totally can. If you just want to start in Sioux Lookout, and that works fine for me too, you decide what you prefer to do. Then you are going to plan where you're going to end, where you're going to stop and stay overnight, and where you're going to stop in between. Um, because you're going to probably need some sort of rest periods. You decide how long you're going to be on the road before rest. This isn't something that I'm going to define for you. So my plan is that I'm going to start at Sioux Lookout. And after my first day, I'm going to end up in Nipigon. But I'm going to stop in Uppsala uh, between there for a break. So between Sioux Lookout and Uppsala is 251 kilometers. And that's two hours and 40 minutes. You can just round to the closest five minutes or 15 minutes, whatever makes sense to you. I'm fairly flexible with that. And then from Uppsala to Nipigon is 236 kilometers, which is two hours and 35 minutes. So at the end of that day, I've traveled 487 kilometers, which is five hours and 15 minutes. So you go through and you're going to be using Google Maps. If I go through and show you how to do a free one in the Google Maps, it takes forever. So I'm just showing you how to record it. But what you're going to do is you're going to put each of these places in. So you start at Nipigon. And then you're going to White River. And then Google Maps will tell you that it's 272 kilometers and that it's about two hours and 55 minutes. And then from White River to Agua Bay, it's 175 kilometers, which is an hour and 50 minutes. And then from Agua Bay to Sault Ste. Marie, it's 139 kilometers, which is an hour and 35 minutes. Again, you get to decide how often you stop and what makes most sense for your household. The end of day two is 586 kilometers, which is six hours and 20 minutes. And we continue to do this for all of our days. So day three, we're going from Sault Ste. Marie to Sudbury, then Deep River, then we end up in Ottawa. I've tracked each of those kilometers between those communities, the hours, and then the total. Day four, I go from Ottawa to trois Verts in Quebec, province of Quebec. Uh, sorry, then we just go to Edmonston, um, New Brunswick. That day sort of a longer, have two long chunks. And then on day four, we go to Fredericton, Moncton, and then Charlottetown. So as you can see, we have some days that are a little bit longer. Some days are a little bit shorter. You decide how you're gonna break up your time. Um, Sometimes, like on day four, there's not really places, there aren't really bigger places to stop. Maybe you figure, maybe you just stop at a, um, a picnic spot or something along the way. Again, you decide what would make sense. And also, this is just a general structure. It's not like it's a set in stone thing. We're just sort of saying how probably you're going to stop every few hours. Have a break. Then the same thing when you're driving back from to Sioux Lookout from PEI. Remember, I said we're only doing this over three days. So Charlottetown to Fredericton, and then Riviera du Loup and the province of Quebec, and then Montreal, which is 1,164 kilometers, which is 11 hours and 40 minutes. So this is a much longer day because we're traveling only in four day, three days instead of five. We're going to have longer days. And then on day two from Montreal, we go to Padawawa and Maisie. And then batch one of bay. So this is so interesting enough. You'll see we have less kilometers traveled, one thousand fifty-five kilometers, but we have more. Uh, it's longer, twelve hours and twenty minutes. This is possibly because of things like rush hour. So driving out of Montreal, driving through Ottawa, 
uh, these things have an impact. Again, these are rough estimates. You can't know until you drive it what exactly it's going to be, but sometimes things are a little bit different uh, because of the time that you're traveling. Then on day three, we're going to go from Bachuan Bay to Marathon to Uppsala, then to Sioux Lookout, and we arrive. So to look at our total distance to drive from Sioux Lookout to Charlottetown and then back, so we need all of those distances, we're going to add them up so that we know how far we went. So we're just going to add them four, seven. I've written them all down to make it easy to add. So 487 plus 586 plus 793 plus 748 plus 613 plus 1,164 plus 1,055 plus 1,016 equals 6,462 kilometers. Okay, so then that's how far we've actually driven for just the travel time. So then when we're adding up our time, we need to think about how that we're it's a little bit different because we're talking about hours, right? So I would add them up individually and think about the hours and the minutes. So five hours, 15 minutes, plus six hours, and 20 minutes is going to be 11 hours and 15 plus 20 minutes is 35 minutes. Okay, so then plus eight hours and 50 minutes. So first I'm gonna say, okay, well, 11 hours plus eight hours is 19 hours. 50 minutes plus 35 minutes. Well, if I add 10 minutes to 50 minutes, I get another hour and I'm left with 25 minutes. So that means that I have 20 hours, not 19 hours and 25 minutes. And then if I add another seven hours and 25 minutes, that's 27 hours. 25 minutes plus 25 minutes is 50 minutes. Six hours and 25 minutes plus 27 hours and 50 minutes. So 27 hours plus six hours is going to be 33 hours. 25 minutes plus 50 minutes is going to be an hour and 15 minutes. So we're going to have actually 34 hours and 15 minutes. Eleven hours and forty minutes plus thirty-four hours and fifteen minutes is going to be forty-five hours and fifty-five minutes. Twelve hours and twenty minutes plus forty-five hours and fifty-five minutes. Well, we can we know that fifty-five minutes plus twenty minutes is going to be an hour and fifteen minutes. So 45 hours plus 12 hours plus one hour is going to be 58 hours. 58 hours plus 10 hours and 50 minutes is going to be, well, 15 minutes plus 50 minutes is going to be one hour and five minutes. So that's going to be 69 hours and five minutes of travel time. So I find it easier than using a calculator to go in between and think about each of the individual steps to calculate the how long it's taking for you to travel. So 
So then what is the average gas cost? Because as we are traveling from province to province, the price of gas is going to change. Of course, I mean, it changes from location to location, but we're just going to use one base price for each province. And instead of calculating individually, we're just going to average them together. So just for the sake of ease, we have four provinces. The gas prices are $1.64 per liter in Ontario, $1.53 per liter in Quebec, $1.42 in New Brunswick, $1.44 in BEI. So 603 divided by four is $1.51. So the average gas price is $1.51 per liter. And so then how much can we expect to spend on gas? Well, we need to remember how much we had for, sorry, 6,462 kilometers is how far we drove. So 6,462 kilometers, that's how we drove, how far we drove the whole time. We're imagining that we're in this Chevrolet Trailblazer, which is, has a fuel efficiency of seven, 0.6 liters per 100 kilometers. So remember, we need to do fuel consumed. I think I forgot a D, an E in there. So we do 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers times 6,462 kilometers. And that is going to be oh sorry about that six four six two four hundred and ninety one point one liters. Okay, so then our cost, we're going to use our average cost. That's why we did it. So our average cost is $1.51 per liter times 491.1 liters. So we multiply that and we get... Seven hundred and forty-one dollars and seventy-eight. Sorry, fifty-seven. Ah, fifty-eight cents. So that's how much you can expect to spend on gas for just the driving there and back. If you do a bunch of driving while you're in Charlottetown, we haven't included that. So that's how much. You, so you want to borrow it probably a bit more than that. All right, so then the accommodations to PEI we need to think about. So we know where we're staying. We planned this already. We're staying in Nipcon, in Sault Ste. Marie, in Ottawa, in Edmonston, in Brunswick. So in each of those places, we need to find a hotel. I don't care what you find. You pick. Search it online. You say Nipcon Hotel, Nipcon Motel. Find something. And then... So I found the Timberwolf Inn. It's a dollar, sorry, $125 a night. I'm saying that all four of us are staying in one room. That's what makes sense. The taxes we have to do, it's Ontario, so it's 13% HST. So we find that tax. So the total cost is the 125 plus 1625 for the taxes, which is a total cost of $141.25. So then we do the same thing as Sault Ste. Marie. We find a hotel. The days in the suites I found for 104 a night. The tax is still Ontario, so still 14%, sorry, 13%. And the total cost for that night is $117.52. In Ottawa, we find the Holiday Inn. It's $150 a night. Still in Ontario. So 13% tax. So in total, $169. Dollars and fifty cents. 
In Edmonston, we find the Travel Lodge, which is 129.8. Now we're in New Brunswick. So they have 15% HST. So we do 15% for the tax. So our total is 148.35. So then to estimate our totals. So for combinations driving to the to PEI. So we do 144.25 plus 111.52 plus 169.50 plus 148.35, and we get $576.62. So that's how much you're gonna be spending on accommodations, driving to PEI. Then, when you're in PI, you need to find the combinations. Remember, you're staying there for four nights. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how we would do that. So I'm just going to search. And I'm going to say, okay, Charlottetown. Prince Edward Island Hotels. <laughs> And we see our holiday in for 146. It's got a pool, looks great. So I'm just gonna say holiday in for 146. Again, we don't need to be too specific or like just finding something is good. Oops. So it's 146 per night. So, but we're doing it for four nights. So that's going to be a cost of one forty six times four is five hundred and eighty four. So then the taxes, we have to do 584 times. Now, PEI doesn't have HST. So we have to do the 10% tax for PST, but also the 5% GST. So 0 0.05 plus 0 0.10. So really it's gonna be, Five hundred eighty-four times fifty percent, fifteen percent. So we don't have to break it up. It's fine. We're just finding how much. Eighty-six dollars. So eighty-seven dollars and sixty cents. So in total, it's five hundred and eighty-four dollars plus eighty-seven sixty is equal to $671.60 is how much it would cost to stay in at the Holiday Inn in Charlottetown. But as you can see, not too tricky to figure that out. Then the same thing when we're going back, we know the places that we're gonna stay. So then we still need to make a plan for staying in Montreal, we're going to stay at Hotel Chateau de la Grappe, which is a 125 a night. The taxes in Quebec are the 5% GST plus 7.5% PSD. So in total, it's 140.63. And on next night, we're staying back to Bay at Voyager's Lodge and Cookhouse at $94 a night. You can really see the prices depending on where you're staying is really different. We're back in Ontario, so it's only HST. Of HST of 13%, so it's 106.22 in total. So then our estimated total for 
driving back for accommodations is 140.63 plus 106.22, which is 246.85. So as you can see, there's lots of steps because there's lots of place parts you need to think about when you're planning a trip. So then we want to estimate the, we're gonna use a daily estimate of $25 per person to calculate food costs for the entire trip. So let's think about, we have five days, there plus four days in Charlottetown plus three days is equal to nine plus three is 12 days. So 12 days that we are traveling and on our vacation. So we're gonna need that we have $25 per day times four people equals $100 per day. So then in total, it's gonna be 12 days times $100 a day. So that's $1,200 in food. Again, rough approximation. Then how much will you spend on entertainment and souvenirs? So this, you're gonna to have to figure out where you wanna go with less than 18, it tells you where you wanna go. Um, so I would say that we're going to go on a ghost tour in Charlottetown. The ghost tour is, admission is $20 per adult, so 20 times 2, plus $10 for kids, so 10 times 2, so that's a total of $60, plus tax, you need to add the tax, remember where you are, because that's $9 in tax, so it's a total of $69. And then we're going to go to Green Gables, which is from Classic Anna Green Gables in Charlottetown, where the price is eight fifty for adults, youth, 13 and over $5, and kids are free. So we have eight fifty times two plus $5 times one. Plus one kid gets it for free for $0, so that's $22 plus tax, which is three thirty. So twenty-five thirty is the total. And then we're going to get some souvenirs from Green Gables. We're going to pick, uh, I think we I picked the plush lobster for $7.99 and the raspberry cordial soap for $8.99. So a total of $16.98 plus tax, which is $2.55. So a total of $19.53. So our estimated total, again, we're gonna add them all together. And we have 69 plus 25.30 plus 19.53 is equal to one, thirteen eighty-three. So how much we're gonna estimate they are spending on entertainment and souvenirs. So then we need to track for the whole trip. So we have to go back to all of our things that we've collected before. So gasoline, we figured out that we spent 741 7.41.58. for the, how much we spent on gas to go there and back. Then the accommodations we figured out was 576.62. When we were going there, plus going back, 246.85. Then when we were in Charlottetown, it was 
671.60. Then for the meals, I remember the meals was 1,200. Then the entertainment and the souvenirs was 113.83. So then we can add them up using our calculator. So this is why keeping track of them as you go is really useful because then you just have the totals to add. We add them all up and we get $3,550.48. So again, this is a rough estimate of how much it would cost. So then you have to answer the questions, can you afford the trip? And what could you do differently to make it cheaper? So there's not a right and wrong answer for these things. These are just you decide and you justify for yourself. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So let's quickly consolidate. <laughs> Well, your trip, we need to think about gas, accommodations, meals, and entertainment. Sorry for the sneezes and the coughs. So hopefully you're really comfortable planning a trip. If you have any questions, of course, always get in touch with me. I'm here to support you however we can. You know the usual ways to get a hold of me, and I'm happy to help however I can. Thanks so much for listening today. I hope you have a great day in the